Today we're going to talk about some of the dangers at the doors of our homes. And this title, actually, it's not a truthful title. It's a title built upon hope of how it should be. We should hope that the dangers are at our door, but the reality is that the dangers are where? They're in the home. They've invaded the home, they've flooded the home, and they've taken over the home. And whose fault is that? It's important. Because if you look at the reasons behind these dangers spreading through our households, spreading through our ideologies, there's two main reasons, two main enemies. The internal enemy from inside and the external one from outside. And then obviously the two main categories, then we have a whole bunch of subcategories that fall under these two. So which one of the two is the most dangerous? And which one has the most fault? Who, who do we blame most? Which one of the two enemies? Huh? Inside. Anybody else? External. Let me ask you another question. Who is the biggest enemies? Or who is the biggest enemy of the Muslims today? Huh? Huh? Okay. Who else? Don't worry, you guys are on camera. I'm going to get in trouble for this. Not you guys. No. You can say it. Yeah. Who is considered, who do we always blame for our problems as Muslims? The West. And? Be more specific. Huh? American Israel. The West, American Israel, specifically. We always blame it. And the Muslims are the best people in the world when it comes to the blame game. Throw it on somebody else. We're doing sins, we're falling, the damn Americans, the damn Jews. It's their fault. Do they have some issues when it comes to corrupting the homes? No doubt, we're not gonna say they don't. But who is the biggest enemy in corrupting the homes? We need to realize. Who is the biggest danger? The one inside the home or the one outside the home? Who let them into your house? We let them in. They put an ideology, they put a method, methodology to spread it. And their troops from the munafiqeen, from the hypocrites, they came and paid them and helped them do it. And we opened up the doors for them, let them in. They're looking out for their own interests. You let them in. So who's really to blame? And this is very, very important. Because all the time we blame America, Blame Israel, blame the West, blame that. But we don't look at ourselves. The change starts from where? No. Within. What did Allah say about change in the Quran? Very good. How do you ghayr? What's inside of them? They don't change, he doesn't change Allah. What the people have to, they change what's inside of themselves. The change comes from within. So you have to pay attention to this. The reality of who the biggest enemy is. You have to be honest. At any time when you want to be successful, you want to make change. The key to the start is to be honest. To come and say, I made a mistake. It's my fault. It's easy to put the blame on other people. When you stand up and say, no, I'm the one responsible. This is when the change starts. The next question. What are the main things, the main dangers that affect the household today in the, in, in, the, in the life we live in today, in the world we live in today? What are the main dangers? TV, internet, what else? The West, <laughs> mobile phones. Huh? What else? Laziness, very good. All kinds of problems. Think about it, because I'm going to come back and ask you guys again. I want you guys to do some brainstorming today. See, the people didn't come in the rain. 
I know it's, it's a lazy thing. People get lazy when it rains. People are at home sleeping, I guess. Uh, so, but anyways, we want you guys to think. Do some brainstorming. Think, what are these dangers? And I'm going to come back to you, inshallah, on it. In reality, this topic tonight, it has a lot to do with the last two topics. Because what we're supposed to be doing, laying out the foundation, once again, it comes back to the dangers. How we're supposed to be raising our children. All you need to do is do the vice versa. The things we need to have an awesome Muslim home, if you're not doing them, it becomes a danger in the home. We mentioned 24, 25 points. Do the opposite. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, it becomes a danger. How you're supposed to be raising your children, we talked about it yesterday. If you're not doing it, it becomes a danger. From the beginning, picking the right spouse. How you built the foundation. So many problems happen now in the households because the people didn't make the right choice in the beginning. You didn't build the foundation right from the beginning. And when a building is built, a foundation in a building, when I first visited Egypt, they showed me several buildings that had collapsed. And so what happened after the revolution, when Morsi became president in this, they were able to build really quick in, in this time before he was elected. Nobody was really watching. They built a whole bunch of buildings that weren't, didn't have permission to build them. And several of them, because they weren't built correctly and they cheated the people, they collapsed, killing some of the people inside. Why did they collapse? Because the what? The foundation wasn't proper. It wasn't built proper. It was built just, just to get it done, get some money. Who cares about the outcome? So the foundation comes back from the beginning. Leaving our responsibilities as parents. We know what we're supposed to be doing, but are we doing it? We talked about this yesterday in detail. What are we supposed to be doing? What is our role? What do we need to be doing? Are we doing it? The man today, we say, what's his main, his main concern today? What is, his, what is his job today? Huh? Money. And most parents today, most fathers believe that this is his duty. To go out, to make the money in the morning, come home, have his meal ready, read the newspaper, watch TV, and go to sleep. And he's done his job, mashallah, tabarakallah, as a, as a parent. To put his kid into a good school, even if it's not an Islamic school, even if it's a Christian school, no problem. Just put him in there, as long as he gets a good education, he's eating well, has a, a nice place to sleep, I've done my job as a parent. This is, this is, this is the issue here, this is the, this is the real danger. Not fulfilling your duties. That's why we said yesterday we have to kindly remind ourselves about the responsibility of being a parent. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, when he said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum masulun an rayyati. SubhanAllah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in each of his words, there's hikmah, there's wisdom. And we're supposed to reflect on them. In reality, who knows in Arabic, what is, what is a ra'i? A shepherd. In reality, it's a shepherd. But here it means that, you know, you're responsible. And what does the ra'i do, the shepherd? He's responsible for what? His flock, his flock of sheep, or so whatever it is. And what happens if he doesn't take care of it? The wolf comes and eats it, takes it away. They get killed by the wild animal, they get lost, they get harmed. And in this hadith as well, mas'ul. What is a mas'ul? Responsible. But it also comes from the root word where it has what? Issue of su'al. Question, meaning that you're going to be questioned. You're mas'ul, you're going to be asked about this duty. Did you fulfill it or not? Did you fulfill your responsibility? It's a serious thing. One of the biggest dangers in our household is ourselves. We don't realize this. Our child's needs, are we fulfilling them? We talked even about the emotional side. The psychology, uh, the, the, uh, how, what are we feeding them? The information that we're feeding them. All of these things we mentioned before. 
if it's not being done properly, then we're the biggest enemies. We're the biggest enemies of our household. The child is, he copies his parents. He's a copycat when he's young. All the information he's seeing from you and your, and, and, and your, and your wife. So if he's seeing good, he's gonna be like what? To what? To good and to the straight path. If he's gonna see bad, he's gonna be where? To the bad path. Sometimes the little kid, he says a bad word. Where'd he hear that from? Hmm? He curses other, other kids, calls them himal, calls them a donkey. Why? Because his father calls him a donkey. That's what he's supposed to do. It's, it's serious, it's, it's a dangerous thing. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that the enemies of Islam and what they want to do to destroy the Muslim family is not dangerous. It's dangerous. It's a major danger. But we have to look at ourselves and reflect on ourselves and what we're doing first. The issue of the TV, which you guys mentioned. Nowadays, the TV is one of the main things that we blame. In reality, no doubt about it, it's one of the most dangerous things that we can do for our children, that we can leave for our children. The television is so dangerous. And it's a very difficult situation that we're put in as parents because it's part of society today. The Islamic stations, the Islamic organizations that have millions and, and, and billions of dollars, some of them, if you put it together. We have money, the money's not an issue. We have the talent as a Muslim ummah to make good Islamic cartoon channels for our children. But do we do it? Where is it? Most of the Islamic stuff is complete rubbish. It's, it's horrible. And the kids know it. My son right now, mashallah, two and a half years old, three, I'll put him in front of the iPad and I'll put an Islamic thing on him. He'll hit something on the side. He's like, that's the good stuff there. He knows by from two and a half years old, this is rubbish what he's watching. These, these, these bad animations and, and, and it's just not good. He goes to the side, he knows how to hit it now. He says, this is the good stuff here. He knows how to turn on his own cartoons now. It's, it's a problem we face. It's a problem. And it's something we have to strive to remind those who have the ability to do it. These cartoons that we see as being something so innocent, not a big deal. SubhanAllah, sometimes when you sit down and you watch the enemies of Islam, NBC3, the enemies, the real big enemies, these type of people when they come and they invade your home, teaching your children not just bad things, not just violence, teaching them straight up kufr. Kufr! So I turned it on when my kid, uh, my kid wanted to watch it. We were in the, in the hotel room. And I was like, wow, that's all kufr. All magic, all different types of gods, superpowers from these gods. And this is being drained into the, in, in, into the minds of our children. Taking him out of the fold of Islam if he believes in this. Making him a kafir if he believes in this. Subliminal messaging being put into their heads. Pornographic stuff. Even non-Muslims from Christians who want to practice their religion, they're saying the same thing. There's studies, testing, and proving that these are sending pornographic messages to our children. I can show you pictures of the freaky Smurfs. The Smurf, Smurfette, she's a mesquina, she's a oh. Sending indirect messages. And I can't say it now because we have a young audience, some of the things I've seen. Indirect. You wouldn't think anything about it. And then when you, you look at how the message is being sent to the kids, billah, corrupting them, destroying them. So what we need to do, and I, I, I'm a parent, just like you're a parent, inshallah. It's going to be very difficult to cut it off 100%. What we need to do is get the message out there to those people who have the ability to make a change, to get something good quality Islamic cartoon stations. That's one thing. Secondly, if our children are going to watch it, unfortunately, we'll have to watch it with them. To make sure what they're watching, censoring it, make sure it's, it's good or not. And it, the, the video games as well. I'm not going to say don't let your kids play, but certain things, we have to draw the line when it comes to that. 
I remember when I was on, on tour in Ireland, my son sends me a message and he said, I want you to pick up a game for me, for PlayStation. I said, okay, what's that? He said, the God of War. <laughs> and I, I, said, I, I, said, I said, are you serious? He said, no, it's not really like that. It's not. I said, what do you mean it's not really like that? Come on, man. I said, what would I look like now going to buy the God of War? I said, come on, man. I said, think of something else. There's got to be something else out there, you know? There's no way in the world I'd buy that. And there's no way in the world I'd let you play that. And that's haram from the name right there. I mean, and no, no telling what's even, it's probably even worse. They went one, when, I mean, when they were younger, they went and bought a whole bunch of games. One of them was Grand Theft Auto. What kind of message is that teaching the kids? I looked at that for the first time and I said, look, I said, there's no, 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 we don't really. I said, I said what, what good does that have in it? It's fun, it's no fun. You're, you're beating up people, killing people, stealing cars. There's other things you can do, we're not gonna mention here as well, if you download from the internet some other crazy things. It's, it's that, that's just horrible. You're gonna be a criminal, a tree of criminals. There's no good in that. I told my kids, I said, look, I said, what you're gonna do, you're gonna break it into little pieces. They're like, oh. And I said, and here's the money to go buy another one. But there's no way in the world that we're gonna have that in this house. It's impossible. Now, come on, everything has its limits, you know? So go buy another game. This stuff is very, very, very dangerous. We have the ability to make Muslim games. But unfortunately, there's nobody sponsoring these things. So there's certain things we realize that as individuals we can't do. But we have to try our best. Remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us? Fear Allah as much as you can. And we have to make sure we know what's going on. We talked to the brothers this morning about this. We talked about it before. The issue of Facebook, Twitter, these things. A lot of parents want to forbid their kids from it 100%. I personally believe that let them have it, but with rules and regulations from the beginning. We talked about that. That if, for example, you have a daughter, there's no pictures, no adding of boys, no this, no that. Things that are haram on it, you use it just for your friends, to have fun, to communicate, no big deal. But we're not going to be doing anything haram and displeasing to Allah upon it. That's better than going behind your back and doing that which is haram and displeasing to Allah.